YouTube and welcome. I am about to work, I think, on my week 14 prompt project for my hashtag Crafty Oat prompts. Now this week the prompts I drew were circles, doily, and texture. If you want to learn more about my Crafty Oat prompts, I'm going to put a link up here to when I made this card using the prompts. But basically this is a project I created um, at the beginning of October where each week I'm drawing three prompts and making a prompt card for my prompt deck. And then later in the week I'll make a larger project that also uses those same prompts. This is that larger project. So when I was actually voicing over the cards video I realized that doily doesn't have to be just paper doilies I have fabric doilies too lace doilies all kinds of stuff so I thought this might be the perfect re way for me to use some of these um, other doilies I that's part of why I'm doing this prompt project is to use some of those materials in my stash and maybe combine them with things that I wouldn't otherwise combine them with so um, I also had the genius idea to maybe put the doily on a ring. So that would be my part of my circle because the doily in itself has is a circle, has a circle, all of that. So I've got these wreath rings from the dollar store. These are the small ones. It's a two piece, eight inch. And I really just want the center ring. So I have my big mama jamma clippers and I'm going to try to do this. Before I try to do it I thought I'd pop the camera on and tell you what I was going to try. That way I can see if it works and if it does then we've got that on here. So I'm going to try that and um, yeah I'll keep the camera on while I do it but probably voice over whatever's to come from here. So it did work. I'm going to take that out of the package and use these pliers. I kind of, and they're not pliers, they're wire cutters. They're the biggest ones I have. I kind of wish I had bolt cutters or something like that because I did struggle a little, but I kind of just worked my way around each of the pieces of the wire and used the back of the cutters to really get as much pressure as I could on them. So... And this last one, I kind of popped it off a little bit. Yeah, so I just had that little piece there. I've done a few things. <laughs> so I did get that off. It does have some really prickly edges to it. And it's still green. So I think I'm going to wrap it with some fabric. I pulled off a strip of, this is an old bed sheet. That I think I'm just going to wrap around it. I've got my glue gun over here warming up. But while it's warming up, I think I'm going to go ahead and alter my doily just a little with some gesso. I also want to note that I cut out, you know, what are these card things called? They're like family photos or something like that from Tim Holtz. And this girl was on this one and I have cut her out. And I have some resin pieces I made using a Finnebear Prima Marketing mold of these uh, wings. And if you know me, I do love my pictures with the wings to make fairies. So I'm going to start prepping all of this basically. So I'm going to take you along for the ride while I do this and we'll see where this goes. I am probably going to try to link as many of things as I can in this, but I'm going to tell you I have a great set from Prima Marketing that includes this heavy gesso in white, there's one in black, there's a sand texture paste, a molding paste, and a 3D gloss gel, gel that all came in that package, and I use all of them in this project but the molding paste. So yeah, this is the white gesso in it. I wanted something really heavy so I'm making sure I'm using this heavy gesso to go over this uh this doily to alter it just a little bit because I knew down the line I would want to use some kind of something inky or bleedy and I thought that if the fabric was on its own it won't bleed the right way it'll just kind of soak into the fabric and I don't want it to do that so that's why I'm coating it with the gesso as just kind of a primer. So that was easy enough. I wasn't sure if I was going to take it all the way to the edges, but I did. And now I'm going to wrap my wreath frame. My hot glue is hot enough and I am starting by going over one of those little lumps there, the burrs from where I cut the wire off. 
and I'm, you know, this starts off a little bothersome. I've got, you know, threads and all of that length of fabric, but I found if I would just put my fabric in one big ball like that, basically, <laughs> it was easier to like wrap it and push it. And so every so often I'll stop and add a little more hot glue to it. And I don't know if you can see, but the way this tore when I tore it is kind of diagonal. So it starts off really thick at one point and then it's going to work down to like more of a point as I go. But I don't care. I just wanted this wrapped. I want to, like I said, cover up those burrs, make it match that doily a little bit more. And this this was my idea and I'm really happy I came up with it because, um, yeah, it, it's going to work beautifully. So here I am. I got to the end. I'm going to trim off some of that excess and then again, kind of put some more glue down, wrap it until I get to the end and then hot glue that at the end. I'm sure there are other glues. I, during this process, I wished I had Fabri-Tac a couple of times, so I may have to break down and buy me some. <laughs> because yeah but the things that I have work and so it's not a huge deal I'm just you know I always want all the things but that's why I'm doing this project is to try to use some of the things so here's why I bring in that heavy gesso in black and I'm going to coat my wings with it. Now, these wings come from a Finnebear mold I got for Christmas. And I'll have some other pieces that I brought, I'm going to bring in as well, that are also from molds. I used a, oh, it's like amazing casting resin. I will try to link it below that has like a 10 minute cure time and it is this opaque color. I, yeah, it's, I will say that that 10 minute cure time means that you have to work super fast with that resin. I, I learned that the hard way, <laughs> but I'm coating these wings with the black gesso. I actually do, I think two coats and I'm just doing the front of them for the time being. One of them, the one on the right, will get a little bit on the back side later. But like I said, I do two coats because it's hard to see where I miss spots when it's wet. And I've got my girl and the only altering I'm doing of her is I've got, oh, I think that's Walnut Stain Distress Ink. And I am inking up the edges just so that the white paper edges aren't so obvious. And I'm using a stencil brush there, but I'll, I'll come back in here in just a second with a makeup sponge just to really get those edges a lot better yeah and go around here like I said that's just so that the white the stark white paper edges aren't showing it feels a little more uh professional or finished I guess so and it doesn't take but a second it's again all stuff that I have so you saw where I'm bringing doily in and I mentioned the circles. The texture is going to be a huge bulk of this here at the end of this video and uh, Y'all, I'm sorry this video is so, so long. It's just how things worked out. All right, so I have my ring, and I want to go ahead and attach it to my doily. So I'm using some Aileen's Tacky Glue, and now I'm just putting down little dabs of that tacky glue on the ring, and then I will put my doily face down and the ring on top. And I'm going to leave that to dry. I believe I left it overnight, actually, <laughs> just to make sure it was good and secure. And then I have come back with my twice coated gessoed wings and I have got some Arteza pearl uh, paints, acrylic paints and a Payne's gray acrylic paint. And I'm going to combine all three of these colors to give a, I wanted them to be kind of bluish, but blackish. So that's why I'm using the Payne's gray, but then adding in these two other colors, which are like a green and a blue. Yeah, you can see them. You know what color they are. Um, and so I'm mixing those up and a lot of this whole process, because these resin molds are new or the resin the molds are new to me and so the resin pieces are new to me I did a lot of playing with different ways to alter them and so that's what the bulk of this video is I did not have any intention of making such a long video when I started but I wanted y'all to see me playing with these materials and you know enjoying my new uh, Christmas presents at least some of them these were on my Amazon wish list and 
um, my husband was kind enough to go down that list and get these. But these were the things I really wanted most on that list. So I'm, I'm tickled that he, he got them. He got that hint. All right, so I will cut these just the one time. I'm going to do a lot of clipping in this, uh, moving between scenes because, yeah. Yeah. So while these are mostly wet, I have cleaned up the paint that was sitting there. I pull out some mica powders. This is a... Oh, I can't remember what it's called, but it, you can see it's white, but it's got a violet hue to it. So I'm trying to give these kind of an iridescent color to them, um, kind of like dragonfly wings. And so again, I'm going to be using several different products. And one of the things I am trying to do when I work on these two different pieces is you, I can see where the violet shows up more, where I put down more on that right wing. So I'm trying to do the same thing on that left wing. So they're at least similar in some ways. So I'm just putting that down on that paint that's still a little bit tacky. And it wasn't near, I told you I wanted kind of a blue theme with this. So the violet kind of bothered me. So the next thing I'm going to do is pull out a couple more things to try to get it more blue. But that violet just just stayed there I'm not it's not going anywhere so I pull in another mica powder and I think it's called true blue but you can see it's still got a bit of violet to it too and I'm just doing the same thing kind of the places where I didn't put that violet down I'm putting the blue down and you know I love this I need to try this with the other colors besides the black because I'd like to see how some of these techniques would work with like a white or a gold. Ooh, y'all. Why didn't I think of that before now? It's, I can try it later. I have the molds. I have the resin. I can do it. Um, so yeah, so I've got that blue, but you can see I've also got that Art Al Alchemy Opal Magic. I think it's a turquoise hue. So that's why I grabbed it because it has that blue hue. And I'm just putting a little bit on a little paintbrush and I'm going to go over the whole wing just to see what alters, what changes, what's different. And then that, no, I've got one more thing. I'll do the wings before they're done. But this is the bulk of it, like what the color is going to be. And I'm loving it really a lot. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait to play with these molds some more. Be prepared to see <laughs> those wings again. So here's the last thing I do with the wings is I have more of that uh, Finnebear paste that, and this is in an aged brass, I think. And I'm just going over it lightly using my finger so it just catches like the raised portions. And I don't know if you can see it at all in the video, um, hopefully in the pictures, but I'm going to admit that when I took the pictures at the end, the light was weird outside. Okay, y'all, here I have a bit of just some like off-white thread on a needle and I'm basically going to go through the fabric that I have wrapped around that ring and then stitch that doily on. Um, this gives a little bit of texture, so there's a texture element to it, but it also helps me... I don't know, feel a little more secure about the doily staying on that ring. So with each pass um, from the back to the front and then from the front to the back, I'm trying to catch that fabric on the ring. I will not make you watch me do this whole thing. I went and um, watched a little bit of TV with my husband and finished. This. <laughs> so it's not on camera at all, but I went all the way around. And then um, I think I used three different lengths of thread to do this. So I would tie it off and clip it and then tie it off and clip. So, and it goes all the way around and it's not perfect or exact, but that's okay. Now I created a little, y'all saw, it's a stack of like three different pieces of cardboard that would fit on the inside of that ring to give me some stability as I worked on the rest of this. So I've got my, I told you I was going to add a little bit more black gesso, to one of those wings. So I'm going to do that here real quick because that back of the, I'm going to have that wing coming off one side of the, of the doily. So I want to make sure that it, uh, you know, I don't need it to be uh, colored the rest of the way the wing is. I just need it to be solid. Now here are two other pieces that I made with the molds. Um, so one of my molds has like wings and moths and uh, things and the other one is like keys and keyholes and so 
I had these keys and keyholes in my little stash. You can see a few more over off on the right um, that I played with. And I'm going to coat these with white gesso. Now, my main thing was is I wanted to make sure that whatever I put on here was going to stick. Because that being a plastic resin, I wasn't sure what would stick. I think because I'm going in here with alcohol ink, it probably would have been okay. But I just felt better adding the gesso. So that is alcohol ink in latte. And I'm just using a little bit of a brush. I've got, you can see some alcohol off to the side that I will bring in in just a little bit. But here's some more of the playing, like seeing what I can use to alter these resin pieces from the molds that I've made and how things react. So yeah, more of that latte is going down. Again, I'm painting both that key and the keyhole. Um, and I'm using these two pieces uh, to help stabilize my girl because the wings are so bulky because they're the resin she kind of slumps down the wall hanging so these are going to help prop her up a little bit so she is level the whole way down so that was the the reason I brought these other resin pieces in now here's some more alcohol ink I think this one's sepia and I'm just, you can see, just putting dabs of it on that keyhole. And then I'm going to get a little bit of the alcohol on my craft sheet there and pick it up to kind of help blend out that that sepia alcohol ink. Now, y'all, in the end, I had no intention of this happening when I did this. But in the end, these almost look like they're rusted. And I, yeah, I don't even know how I did that. But the sepia, you can see that kind of rusty color on it. I'm going to add more to it. But keeping some of that rusty color showing. And it's, yeah, I'm I'm really tickled with this, the way these came together. It, they don't completely go with everything, but yeah. All right, so this is one of the alcohol ink mixatives. I shook it up really good. Um, I t did that off camera, and I can't remember the color. It's probably like aged brass or something like that. And it could be antique gold. I'll, I'll try, I'll put it below in the description box. And you can see I'm just lightly painting it over top of that other color. Now I could have, because it is a mixative, could have mixed it in with that sepia, but I didn't know I was going to add this when I did that. So <laughs> I'm doing it after the fact. Once I do get this down, I start to realize that I'm losing some of the detail, especially on that keyhole. So I knew I wanted to bring in some black. And I'm going to start with this Liquitex Metallic Acrylic Ink in Graphite, I believe. It's Yeah, um, this was another Christmas present. I mentioned it before. My niece gave me some, or my nieces gave me these little set of six Liquitex uh, Metallics. That was super sweet of them. So I am using them. I'm trying to, you know, use the things I've been given and that I have. So you can see I'm painting around that, trying to accent it. It's not doing exactly the job that I want. So I'm going to bring in one final thing because I like the graphite because it still keeps that metallic element. And you can see some more of the details on that keyhole now than you could before. But it's not quite the dark irony feel that I wanted. So in just a second, what I'm going to pull out is Rub and Buff in Ebony. And y'all, I'm excited. I took some of my Christmas money and I've ordered a couple other Rub and Buffs. Um, Ina Salisbury often uses the gold Rub and Buff, and that's one of the ones in my mix that I just bought. Um, and it always is like the perfect color of gold. And I haven't found anything else that is exactly what I want yet. So I'm hoping when that comes in, I'll be playing with that some more. So here's that Robin Buff. Y'all, mine is, I've had that Robin Buff for, I don't even know, far longer than it probably is good for. So it is kind of dried up. So you can see I'm, I'm kind of scooping it out with the skewer and getting it kind of creamy with the warmth of my hand and then rubbing it over these two pieces. So like I said, I played with this. I wanted to see what I could do with these, both with the, the resin pieces, what the resin would take. And yeah, just what would stick to it. And yeah, so I really had a good time with this. I'm, I hope you are enjoying watching it because it was a lot of fun for me to really just kind of experiment and play with this. So I'm, and again, you can see I have not altered the backs of these. I'm not super concerned with them. 
the backs are super shiny and slick because they weren't down in the molds. So maybe if you're interested in seeing a, a video of how I make the, you know, how I use the molds, let me know. I will try to do that. But like I said, the resin I'm using is super fast curing. So it makes me a little nervous to try to do it in a video. All right, so this is rub and buff, so I am buffing it a little bit to see if I can get any of the excess off and to kind of make sure it's kind of sealed on there. So once all of that's done, I'm going to start gluing these things down. I thought for a minute about what I was going to use, and I'm going to just use my E6000 because it, it doesn't disappoint. And again, I've got that cardboard base in there to offer support while I glue these down because I didn't want this to sink and stretch the fabric while I was gluing everything. So that's, yeah, like I said, I created that. I just um, traced the inside of my hoop and then cut out some cardboard and I stacked it to the height that I needed. So I'm using my E6000 here. I'm gonna mark where I have both my little keyhole and my key. And yeah, just a pencil, cause I know I'll cover it up. And yeah, get these glued down. I love E6000, y'all. And I wanted to use my mini E6000, but y'all, the lid on it is stuck. So I'm, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Because <laughs> I hate to, because it's almost a brand new tube. You see it over there? Ah, oh, very disappointing. And it's hitting me now that I think that key isn't um, maybe level but I'm not super concerned about it. It's the rest of the, the grunginess that's going to be on here is, is going to make up for it. And yeah, I realized that that tip of that wing wasn't quite glued down, so I fixed that. And I did give it a second to dry, but I'm coming in straight away with that because E6000 didn't take long to dry. This is the sand paste that's in that same set, and I will try to link that whole set if I can find it on Amazon. If not, I will put links to the individual things again if I can find them. Um, but that said, if you want to, and I, that's why I bought the set, is I wanted to try out these different products from Prima Marketing and Finabare, and yeah, I kind of love them. So I may be buying more, especially the 3D gloss paste, which is what I'm pulling out here because I think I used on something not long ago and it, it rocked. So once I get that, uh, sand paste down that was a little bit of texture I've put down some of that 3d gloss gel and I've got these oh what are they called they're like texture pebbles or something these are I cannot remember the brand um Bria Reese I think I think I got them on clearance and they are Bria Reese ones and I'm using the small these are probably like the medium size one I think I have the medium size and the large ones and I'm using that 3d gloss paste to adhere them i'll shake off the excess at different points i don't even know if i kept that in the video because it was really just me shaking off the excess seeing in there i yeah dipped my sticky paintbrush right into <laughs> those little texture stones and picked them right back up so Y'all can see I'm not super exact about any of this. So while that was that was still wet and I cleaned everything up, I have this thing of, you know, these are tiny glass beads. They're not even beads. They don't have holds, but they're called glass beads. They use them in the reflections for the lines on the road. And when they put in new lines on my street, they left a big pile of those beads sitting in the road. And y'all better believe I was out there scooping them up like a fool because I knew I could do this. Basically, either mix them with a gel medium or kind of sprinkle them over things that are like that. All right, so once that's dry, I've got some, this is walnut ink crystals mixed with some water in a dropper bottle. And y'all, I'm going straight to it. I was real nervous about this, but it, it really works out so cool. So I'm starting at the top and dropping that down, dragging it in the direction I want, and then using a wet paintbrush to kind of just help help it go over those textured areas. So this is the third prompt, which is texture. But you can see I brought in texture in many ways. Like the doily itself has some texture. 
I accented the texture on all of the resin pieces I've put in there, but then I've also added texture with these textural pastes and elements. So yeah, I'm super excited about this piece. So again, I have put some more of that ink down and I am moving it around with my wet paintbrush, uh, getting in different areas. I'm not super concerned about the area where I know my, my girl's going to go kind of there, you know, between the wings and down. And I'm just moving that ink around. Now, I will say that I'm noticing that because I didn't gesso any of that, that these stones, which are, I don't know, they're almost papery in texture, are just kind of a little blah. So once I dry this, I know that I need to add something that's a little more solid than that ink. So I'm going to come in with acrylic paint using the same colors that I used on the on the wings so I'm actually not going to use that green color but I'll use that that light blue color but first I've got the paint gray acrylic paint and I'm going to wet it down really good because I want it to kind of drip too but like I said I wanted the paint and not an ink because I wanted something a little more solid to cover up some of the white parts of the of those stones and things that are showing so that's what I'm doing so I'm kind of going over some of the airs making sure that that the walnut ink oh I'm making sure that that walnut ink still shows out on the edges and I'm letting that kind of trip naturally so and I'm 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 loving that and I'm going to come back in again I think to go over a couple more areas I think that's what I do yeah just where I can see that white poking out and then and then I'm gonna try this and come back in with that blue what metallic paint yeah just here and again I'm gonna water it down with my distress sprayer but not too much and just dab it on I'm not gonna let it drip the same way I did the other two because I wanted this a little more controlled because I still want the other two colors to kind of show through so it's kind of like an hour outer layer of the brown and then the Payne's gray and then on top of that is this metallic blue so and there's still so much more I kind of wanted to do with this I kept thinking oh I could I could sew some buttons on or do some French knots with some things or some gold splatters because y'all know I love some gold splatters um, I even thought about stamping in the background too to add texture before I started everything which was the main reason I created that little cardboard platform was so I could stamp on there and have something solid but no so now I let this dry, or I, I think I do dry it with my heat tool, and I'm going to come in and it's time to glue my girl down. So I am going to start with the gloss gel, and it just, while it did stick to the key and the keyhole a little bit better, the uh, bumpy texture of the wings, it wasn't, the girl wasn't sticking to, so I've, I come in with the E6000 later, I'll show you that to you in a minute so she is stuck there I've got my little platform I put on the back again um so I use my E6000 and to finish this off y'all I have just got a ring which is another circle I'm bringing in and then I have like a fancy safety pin that I'm just gonna clip that together and that is it for week 14 of my Crafty Hope Prompts project. This was a long one. If you stuck in with me, I really appreciate it. If you were playing along, make sure to use that hashtag Crafty Hope Prompts. If you have any questions, please ask away. I love to hear from you. It, it means the world that, that you want to say something to me. So please, I, I love the comments. And if you like this, give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Bye.